Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to go ahead and get started with advanced consisting, as I promised. Because, you know, a lot of people have been, uh, been confused about how to set up advanced consist and how to program them on the layout. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so with advanced consisting, the big difference relative to universal consisting is that you can control how each locomotive responds to each set of functions on your throttles. So if you press the bell uh, function button, F1, on your throttle, um, either all of the loco locos could respond or only one could respond. And so on for the horn, the um, headlights, anything on, on the uh, functions that you can control, you can determine which locomotives are going to respond to that. And that makes it very easy to be much more prototypical in your operations. Because on a prototype locomotive, uh, in a consist string, only the uh, lead locomotive uh, has the bell going off and the horn or whistle sounding and um, would have the headlights on. Everything else is generally turned off uh, on those trailing locomotives. And it's only when you reverse direction that the trailing locomotive itself would take over those functions because the crew would turn all the buttons off in, there in the lead cab, move back to the uh, trailing locomotive or the rear loco rear rearmost locomotive, which then becomes the lead. And then they would turn switches on there to be able to control the lights and the light. Um, so what you want to be able to do is replicate that kind of functionality with your models during operating sessions. And um, this approach allows you to do that. So how do you go about then uh, in advance uh, planning for which locomotives are going to do what. So let me go ahead and show you one quick way to do that. Um, fortunately, there's actually two ways you can go about it. One way that I've shown you in the past was to use Decoder Pro, even if you don't have an interface for it to do with the programming, you can use Decoder Pro and you can you know, click on all of the settings for advanced consisting and then you can go to the CV listings in the uh, a separate pane and you can look up the um, CV values that are calculated for CVs 19, which is the consist address, CV 21 and 22, which control the functions. Write those down and then go program them either on the service mode track or using ops mode on the main line. So that's one way to go about doing it. Another is a nice little tool that Digitrex provides, and I think I've shown you this in the past. It is called their uh, toolbox. Okay, this is the section of the uh, Digitrex toolbox for calculating the values for CVs 21 and CVs 22. Um, now, for example, for the lead locomotive, we're going to want to control the bell, F1, the horn at F2. Uh, I'm going to want the class light control for these locomotives at F6. Uh, we want to mute at F8. And we'll turn on the lights as well. There. So that gives us a value of 163 for CV21 and a value of 3 for CV22. Now for the trailing locomotive, we don't need F1 and F2, but I'm going to leave the rest on. So that gives me values of 160 and three for the uh, trailing locomotive. Now for locomotives uh, that would be in the middle of the consist, we'll turn everything else but the F8 function key off. And that way we would have a value of 128 and a value of zero. So what I do then is just write these down and make up a little table like this one here with um, the locomotives that I want to assign functions to, and then the values of the CVs that I want to, uh, to assign them. And then it's a simple matter to go ahead and do the programming. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are back again uh, in Monroe Yard on the Piedmont Southern, and I've got the same two locomotives set up as we used in the uh, video on universal uh, uh, consisting uh, on Friday. Okay, so let's take a look at how we go about programming these specific functions uh, for these locomotives. So you can see I've got 6547 here 
on the right hand throttle and 2147 here on uh, the left hand throttle. So let's go ahead and we'll start with uh, 6547 and we're going to want to use Ops Mode Programming. So let me click on Programming and we'll click through until we get to Ops Mode. So you can see it says PO6547. So now what I want to do then is let's go up to CV19 and uh, for that just activate the throttle there and hit 19 and we'll hit enter and that should take us to CV19 and then we're going to want to ent enter a value in CV19 of 65 for that particular locomotive since it's going to be in the lead. Hit 65 and then we'll hit enter. Okay, it says good. So we got a good right that time. And then let's go ahead and go on up to OCV 21 and for that locomotive we want a value of 163. Okay, so click in and do one um, six three. Okay, now I'll hit enter and we get good again. And let's go on up to uh, 22. Okay, there we go. And we want a value there of three. So we can do that. Hit enter and we've got that one. So then we just repeat the process. Let me exit. And then we're going to want to activate this throttle and hit program. Okay. And we're at ops mode programming for 2147. We're going to want to uh, program CV22 to a value of three. I've already got them keyed in. So let's go ahead and hit the enter key. And we got a good read on that one or a good write there. Um, and then we drop back down to CV21, and in that one we wanted a value of 160. So I have to enter 160. Okay, that's good. And we hit enter, and we get a good right there. And now we'll drop down to CV19. Now CV19 takes a little bit more work because I'm going to operate this locomotive in reverse. And I'm doing that just to show you how this works, because in order for the decoder to know that it's supposed to be going in reverse instead of the normal forward, you have to add 128 to the consist address. So let's go ahead. We'll key in 193. Didn't take. There we go. And hit enter there. And we got a good right. So... That should take care of everything um, as far as programming the advanced consist. So let's go ahead and take a look on the layout, and I'll show you how it works there with the two locomotives that uh, we programmed with universal consisting the other day. We're going to change the lead locomotive to 65, okay? And both locomotives should operate now. And you can see they're moving off together at the same speed. Let me bring the lead locomotive back in. Whoops. Get these back in here. And when I blow the horn, I only get horn from this one. When I ring the bell, only this one is ringing its bell. Okay. If I turn on the class lights, you can see they both come on, and both headlights are on. So we've got all of those functions that we wanted. We can then hit the mute button, F8, and both of them should go ahead and shut down. Okay, this one has already shut down. Now that one is shutting down. Okay, and once you're done, all you have to do 
is go back into Ops Mode Programming and reprogram CV19, which is the consist address, back to zero. And what that will do is it will allow the locomotive decoder to then respond to its original address that it was uh, that you were using. So in my case, 6547 and 2147 uh, would then be the addresses that I would access each locomotive individually. Now, one thing about advanced programming is it's a little bit more difficult to make and break a consist. Okay, it's not as easy as I showed you with universal consisting where you can very quickly break out of a consist. It, it, it didn't take any programming steps. It was just a simple um, thing to do on the throttle. But, you know, it's not that difficult to change in ops mode the uh, address in CV19 and, and go back to being able to control a consist or break a locomotive out by taking CV19 back to zero and then that will allow you to use its original um, extended address or the two-digit address, whichever you are using. So that's about all there is to advanced consisting. It is, you know, reasonably straightforward once you have a grasp of how to go about programming the CVs, 19, 21, and 22, and, of course, how to use the programs up front, uh, Decoder Pro or the Digitrax Toolbox. And I've included in the, the description a link to the uh, JMRI website and uh, where you can download Decoder Pro and to the Digitrax website uh, page on um, the toolbox, the Digitrax Toolbox. So one way or the other, it, and, and let, me, let me also point out that a very good resource uh, on calculating the individual values by hand, if you want to go about it that way, is to go to the Soundtracks website and then go into their support pages and download uh, one of the manuals. And um, that will give you a very good description of how to go about calculating all these things by hand if you're uh, very interested in how to do that. Uh, other than that, that's about all that there is to it. So go ahead, give it a try, and uh, I hope I've uh, cleared a little bit of the fog on this subject for advanced consisting. Take it easy now. We'll see you on Friday with a new video.